Lucas was interested in doing an animated project, but they even told us, they said, you know, like George wanted our interpretation of it to a degree. It's pretty exciting now to get a chance to, to help out and contribute to a giant mythology like Star Wars. Like an important key for him is that we put our own signature in a way on it. And we're like, wow, we get to actually write and come up with our own stories. You know, so I think that was kind of really understood and the more we pushed things, the more they liked it. Master Fisto, in these matters, trust your insight we do. May the Force be with you. You definitely have to pay respect and to show respect for what's been done and to follow some of the laws of the universe to just create stuff that we'd want to see as fans and as you know filmmakers. And even though we're following this one big main story, there's little tiny side stories interspersed throughout to kind of give this more non-linear feel, even though it's one story. So what we're doing is we're taking the uh, Clone Wars and we're doing 20 three-minute episodes with them of kind of one continuous stories with a few sidetracks where we go and see different adventures. Obi-Wan Kenobi has found out that there's some problems on the banking world of Munalist. The banking clan has hidden huge factories on Munalist, building huge droid armies and massive warships. We must act quickly. And so he commissions an, an army, he's a general, and uh, him and Anakin and other Jedis go down and there's a big war. Our troopers deploy! General Kenobi, we are in position. Target sighted. Very good, son. Proceed with the next phase. I'm on my way. That's kind of the big overall story. And then we have another side story of where Count Dooku hires an assassin, uh, Asajj Ventress, to destroy Anakin. You will find him for us and eliminate him. Jedi, their order is a fading light in the dark. Corrupt and arrogant, they must be punished. Instead of just copying how the actors look exactly, we're kind of taking their essence and stylizing them, kind of pushing them in places. First we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, who's now a general, and he's leading a lot of the uh, clone troopers, the armies. And then we have Anakin, who's his Padawan. We've treated Anakin kind of like a solemn force of energy. And I think that's coming off pretty good, because you kind of feel his anger without him saying a lot. Padme is the senator from Naboo and the secret lover of Anakin Skywalker. A Yoda is in a few episodes. True. With his master at Padawan's place is. Also we have uh, Kanduku. There's another villain that we use is Dirge, who's this bounty hunter that the banking clan has uh, hired to help them fight. And then we have two episodes with Mace Windu. Also, we do a one-off special with Kit Fisto, where we see an underwater Jedi battle for the first time. So we see lightsabers being used underwater, and it's this great underwater fight. We have this group of ARC troopers, which are these commando clone troopers. And there's like 12 of them, and they're even better than the normal clone troopers. So we have them doing very military commando-style tactics. And they do all these like hand signals, and it's all very you know, technical. But you get this feeling of coolness from it. So it all becomes kind of our own version of it, even though it still feels, in essence, like Star Wars. It is very visual, and I think that's kind of what we keyed upon. And we're telling just fun battle stories with great characters that have already been established in the films, and if we're successful in pulling it off, it'll be a very great piece of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs>